In emergency situations, the last thing on the minds of Ontarians are provincial politics and corporate mismanagement. Unfortunately, the two came together in the perfect storm to create the Orange Affair. Outfitting the province with an air ambulance system was the main goal. But failed performance targets, the CEO's self-serving business arrangements, and questions over helicopter safety became the norm instead. The result? Orange executives were dismissed. The Orange CEO walked away with a multi-million dollar golden handshake, and an OPP probe was begun to finally get Ontarians the answers we deserve. Here's the whole story. It all began in 1977, when the province began an air ambulance service operating out of Toronto's Buttonville Airport. In 2002, hospital participation was expanded to include areas covered by bases across Ontario, Thunder Bay, Timmins, Sioux Lookout and Toronto. By 2005, this loose arrangement came together to form the Ontario Air Ambulance Services Company, established to coordinate air ambulances province-wide. In 2006, the name changed to Orange to reflect the iconic orange color of its transport vehicles. Orange would go on to receive $730 million in taxpayer funding over the next five years, roughly $150 million a year, and borrow some $300 million more. Problems at the newly formed Orange began almost from the very start. In his first full year as CEO, Chris Mazza would rake in $870,000 in compensation, while reporting publicly only $285,000. The next year, in the 2007 publication of the Sunshine List, Chris Mazza was paid $298,000 in compensation, while internal orange documents in reality showed that figure to surpass $1 million. By 2008, Chris Mazza disappeared from the Sunshine List, as Orange created a for-profit shell company used to pay its top executives instead. Between 2010 and 2011, Mazza would further receive over $2.5 million in salary, 0% interest loans, bonuses, and cash advances written against future bonuses. The House of Cards began to tumble in March 2012, when Auditor General Jim McCarter would deliver a damning, quote, value for money audit highlighting disturbing issues at Orange. Among them, hitting only 15% of its target for building a land ambulance system, increasing in government funding for air ambulances while the number of patients transported actually decreased, as well as the purchase of surplus helicopters on the taxpayer dime for use in private companies, all to enrich Orange executives. In a brazen sleight of hand, the AG report exposed how Orange sold its headquarters to a subsidiary owned by Orange executives, only for Orange to lease the headquarters back at 40% above the market rate. This netted $9 million in transfers from taxpayers to Mazza and his cronies. Representing the government and legislative committee, Health Minister Deb Matthews' response to all of this was shocking. Choosing to pass the buck, she testified, quote, because Orange was a federally incorporated charity, legislative options were not available. The following month, CEO Chris Mazza was served with an order to appear before the Queen's Park Legislative Committee. A few weeks later, the Toronto Star reported that Mazza had been declared unfit to testify before the committee by two psychiatrists. All of this while reports swirled concerning scheduling conflicts and staffing issues at Orange, leading to the failure to respond rapidly to a crash victim in Stouffville, who later died of his injuries in hospital. The second shoe would drop when media reports revealed details of former Orange aviation boss Rick Potter's shocking testimony before the Legislative Committee, that Orange knowingly overpaid $7.2 million to Augusta Westland for 12 helicopters in a deal totaling $144 million. And in apparent quid pro quo, an Orange subsidiary then turned around and signed two contracts with the firm. This would provide the basis for the allegations of the $6.7 million kickback to a private firm run by Chris Mazza off the backs of a deal paid for with your tax dollars.
Dr. Mazza, do you solemnly swear that the evidence you shall give to this committee touching the subject of the present inquiry shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Thank you. At the outset, and with the benefit of hindsight, I acknowledge that although I might have done some things differently, I would have and always have acted with the best interests of the residents of Ontario in mind. Much has been made of my compensation package. You will know that all executive compensation was a board decision made with the assistance of compensation specialists Cleast and Global Governance. My total compensation package may seem to be excessive. It is my understanding that those decisions were made using data that compared my responsibilities and obligations to other similar companies and their executives. I regret that it has been a lightning rod for controversy.